Hey guys, welcome back. We are now on section 1.2, Gaussian elimination and Gauss-Jordan elimination. And basically, we are going to take care of a few things here. I'm going to start with key terms, such as matrix, entry, row subscript, column subscript, the size, square, and the main diagonal. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is First, I'm gonna give you a matrix, and a matrix is basically a rectangular array. And it's gonna be filled with all of these positive integers right now, right? And so I'm gonna have M rows, and I'm gonna have N columns. Now, here, I'm representing the first person as A with a one and a one. This one, represents the row subscript and this one represents the column subscript. So A11 refers to the element that's in first row, first column. This person, A13, represents the person who's in the first row, third column. This person here represents the person that's in the third row, first column. This person here is going to be in the M row, first column. This person here is going to be in the first row, N column. And then this person down here is going to be in the M row and the N column. And therefore, we are going to say that this is a M by N matrix, where M represents the number of rows and N represents the number of columns, okay? So we call it, or we read it by M by N, okay? Once again, specifically here, this is the M row, the N column, okay? So we're gonna need that for chapter two. Let's talk about the sizes of the matrices. First example that I have here is basically two by two, meaning there are two rows by two columns. So I'm gonna call that M by N, okay? So a matrix with M rows and N columns is of size M by N. So the size here is two by two. The size here is one row by one column. The size here is two rows by two columns. The size here is two rows by three columns. Okay, two rows by three columns. Okay, this is actually something really important that we're gonna talk about shortly. Okay, so one of the common uses of matrices is to represent systems of linear equations. The matrix derived from the coefficients and the constant terms of a system of linear equations is called the augmented matrix. So assume that I have the system, okay? And what I wanna to do to create this augmented matrix is I'm going to take the coefficients Sorry, so we're gonna do that. So I'm taking, so let's do that. So that's gonna be one, negative four, positive three. So you see it right there. You're gonna take negative one, positive three, negative one, and then don't forget the zero here. Two, zero, negative four. It's augmented matrix is when we put these numbers along with it. So five, negative three, six. If I just wanted the coefficient matrix, I would just then, this is gonna be a little cheating, I would just then just take this and put that here. So we have the augmented matrix, which is going to include the coefficients and the constant terms and the coefficient matrix, which is going to include just the 
coefficients that's in front of the variables, okay? We're going to go and take a look back at things that we did in 1.1. So here, when we have matrix, we're gonna do these elementary row operations. We've seen them before. We can interchange two equations. We can multiply an, an equation, excuse me. We can multiply an equation by a non-zero number. And then we can um, take a constant and, um, I apologize, this got cut off. This is for non-zero constant. And then we're going to add a multiple of an equation to another equation. So I'm going to give you this matrix right here, 4286, 1035, 2863. And I'm going to show you how to do the proper notation. Okay, so the notation is crucial. When you are interchanging two rows, like row one and row two, what you just do is you put this double-headed arrow and you just switch these two, okay? So you, you need these notations here. This arrow here says produces. So if you wanted to take one half of the second row, which I did here, right? If you wanted to take one half of the second row, which is this guy here, you just put produces a new second row. So one half. So if you want to show the reader what you did here, you're going to say I took one half of the second row and then I would look up here to take a look at your second row and I would see that that's half of it to produce a new second row, okay? So that's what we mean by multiply an equation by a non-zero constant. That's what we mean by interchange two equations. And then I just brought this over from the previous page, okay? And now I'm going to do row three, which is this person. And I'm gonna add that to negative three times row one, which is this person, to produce a new row three, okay? What does that mean? That means your first person and your second person must stay the same. Now, what I said earlier was that I put this here, but I have to look back up here. This is the new answer, okay? So what did I do here? I'm gonna take a different color. I'm gonna take the third, which is this, and then multiply the first by negative three to get these, and then I'm gonna get this as my new R3, okay? So I'm gonna put that right there. So this is the proper notation on how to show this. I did this down here because I want you to know that it is so easy to make an algebra mistake and so you need to be extremely careful. Okay, so I'm going to take this example and it's um, a linear system, right? And it's going to be x minus 2y plus 3z equals 9 negative x plus 3y plus 0z equals negative 4, 2x minus 5y plus 5z equals 17. I'm going to make what we call an augmented matrix, okay? Which means I'm gonna take all the coefficients that are in front of these, right? One, negative one, two, one, negative one, two. Same thing here, negative two, positive three, negative five. You'll see that here and then three, zero, five, and then the constants. And I'm gonna change it to an augmented matrix. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to try to solve this system by using elementary row operations. So why don't we begin by taking this problem, which I have here, and what I did here was, I'm going to take the first, so remember what we want to do, or maybe I did not mention it. I need a one here, and I would like a zero here and a zero here. That's my first goal, okay? So one, a zero, and a zero. So I notice that these two, if I combine them, will give me a zero in, this, in the uh, second row, first column. So I take row one, and row two, and I add them to produce row two. So one and negative one makes zero, negative two and three makes one, three and zero makes three, nine and negative four makes five. So I'm done there. 
Now, I need a zero here, okay? So how do I get a zero here? I'm gonna take negative two and times it by the first person and then add it to the third person. So I showed the work here. I'm taking negative two times this. So that's gonna be negative two, four, negative six, negative 18, and I'm gonna add it to the th third row, and I'm gonna produce a new third row. Watch the notation, guys. And then you can pause the video to check my work, but it's right here. So now I have this. My next goal, everyone, is to make sure I have a one, here and that's amazing because I already do so I have a one here a one here and now I need a zero under here okay so I got this it's the same thing we just saw that's why there's nothing here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the second and third row to produce a new third row so zero plus zero is zero one and negative one makes zero, three and negative one makes two, and five and negative one makes four. So I'm great right there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one half of R3 to produce a new R3. You might say, why? Because you want one here, here, and here. You want what we saw here, one of the keywords, which was, sorry, I'm bringing you all the way back, the main diagonal. You want this main diagonal to have ones, okay? My apologies, but we want the main diagonal to have ones, okay? So once we have this, we are all set. Let's see what happens. Remind yourself that this is really X, this is Y, this is Z, and these are your answers. So here, because you divided this by half, this becomes one and two. So look how we do this. One Z equals two, that's here. Do back substitution, put the two in here. Three times two is six. Minus that to the other side, you get Y to be negative one, and then you just solve for X by back substitution, okay? So this makes it really, really easy. What we just saw was this is what we call row echelon form. Row echelon form has the following properties. So a matrix is in row echelon form would have the following properties below. Any row consisting entirely of zeros occurs at the very bottom, okay? For each row that does not consist entirely of zeros, the first non-zero entry is one, which is called a leading one, okay? For two successive non-zero rows, the leading one is the higher row, um, in the higher row is farther to the left than the leading one in the lower row. So let's take a look, right? Here are two successive rows. This one is to the left of this one. Here are two successive rows. This one is to the left of this one, okay? Now, the first non-leading zero in this is one. The first non-leading zero, the first number that's not zero is one. So that's what this property means, okay? The first non-zero entry is a one. That's what that means, okay? Now, a matrix in row echelon form is in reduced row echelon form when every column that has a leading one has zeros in every other position and above it and below it. So what that means is if you had something like this, So you would have all this, this is called reduced, reduced row echelon form, okay? And if you're solving, you would have like a four, or three, a two, so that means x equals four, y equals three, z equals two. So that's row, uh, that's reduced row echelon form. Okay, so we're gonna finish off this video and we're going to basically just ask the basic question of, whether each matrix is in row echelon form, 
And if it is, determine whether the matrix is also in reduced row echelon form. Okay. So is A in row echelon form? Well, let's see. My first non-zero entry is 1. My first non-zero entry is 1. My first non-zero entry is 1. My diagonal has all 1s. Remember, because we have zeros here, that means that it's in row reduced. I'm sorry, that means that's in row echelon form. So A is definitely in row echelon form. B, what do you guys think? Take a look at B. The matrix in B is not in reduced echelon form because the zeros are not at the very bottom. But if you just did something like this, like take R2 and switch it with R3, let's see what would happen. Well, all the zeros are on the bottom, so we're good there. Any row consisting of entirely zeros occurs at the bottom. And we have a one and a one as our leading coefficient. So therefore it would be, okay? But it's not. What about letter C? C is in row echelon form, okay? C is in row echelon form. Take a look at it. We don't have any rows consisting of zeros, so we don't have to worry about it, okay? And then we have the first one that you see that's not a zero, it's a one here, right? The first one that we see is here, but there's zeros in front of it, so it's still a one, one, one. And every successive row, the one is to the left of the one below it. Every successive row, these guys are to the left of the one below it. So this is, right? And then what about letter D? Well, you can just grab this, make your, your zeros are at the bottom, so that's great. You have ones here. Now, remind yourself, these are your answers, so don't look here. These are your answers, so let's forget about it. Take a look at this part here. This is not only row echelon, but it's reduced row echelon. Okay, so this, this, and this have all zeros above and below each position. So it's definitely row echelon because the zeros are at the bottom. All the ones have zeros to the left of them and then there's zeros above and below them, so it's reduced. Just to jump to F, F is also reduced, okay? The zeros are at the bottom, so almost like forget about this. There's zeros to the left of this one, there's zeros to the left of this one. There's a zero above this one, there's a zero below this one, and to the left of each one. So therefore, this is the same. And here's our final example, letter E. The matrix in E is not in reduced echelon form because the first non-zero entry in row two is not a one. If you did multiply the second row by a half, then it does change to row echelon form. So I hope that was helpful and come back for the second video, which I hope to sum up uh, section 1.2 with, okay?